In case we trade back into one tonight, or do you want me to confirm that we may or may not do that? Now, um, yeah, we're excited to get Malik. Um, you know, he's a he's a guy who's been on our radar for for quite some time as an ex explosive playmaker that you know can play multiple spots, uh, can separate, has run after the catch, very good hands, very productive, and in a difficult conference. So you know, look forward to getting here tomorrow, and then getting him you know in the building a couple weeks from now, and. Um, you know, as, as we get him in with the, the rest of the players in our culture and, and developing him and competing for, you know, his, his play time. So with that, we'll open up for questions. What made you obviously had a choice there, Malik over uh, Odunze? Yeah, we have a lot of meetings, you know, th throughout the season. And at the end of the day, we just thought Malik's uh, toughness, separation, speed, not that Rome doesn't have all those things. We, you know, Rome's a very good player too. Just um, when it came down to it and what we were looking for, Malik checked a lot of those boxes. You know, as a person, his his uh, toughness, competes, production. You know, and, and again, the versatility that he'll bring to the table. Joe, you, there were quarterbacks on the board certainly for you. Um, and um, um, first of all, how aggressive were you trying to trade up to get a quarterback? Yeah, I think I said last week we were going to have conversations in front of us. We actually had conversations behind us there was an opportunity for for us to move out of the pick so uh, we had conversations uh, we had different plans in place and we're ecstatic to have Malik neighbors here so we're really happy the way it worked out there's been a lot of reporting that you were pushing with the Patriots so specifically for the third pick just curious like, how serious did those talks get and was there just a walk away point where their their ask was too high yeah, again, we had a lot of conversations with a lot of teams. I'm not going to get into specifics. And we got a really good player at six that, you know, was a position that, I, you know, I think was a need that we needed to upgrade. And, again, I'm, I'm ecstatic to have, you know, Malik here. I'm, I'm really fired up about the kid. Is he text from Daniel Jones regarding his pick? Yeah, he's fired up. I, I texted him Malik's number. That was one of the first things I did, and he, he, he's fired up about it. Right. So he, he knew before that it was announced on ESPN and uh, NFL Network. I let him know. Brian, what does it mean for you to have, you know, that sort of, for lack of a better term, the number one type receiver? Yeah, look, I'm excited about Malik. He's a, he's a heck of a player. He's a, he was a fun guy to evaluate. Um, like Joe talked about, he's got quickness. He's explosive. He's got a good run after the catch. He's got a great mindset in terms of the competitor that he, the competitive style he plays with. Um, he's played well in big games. Uh, get him in the program, get him with the with the receivers and, and into the offense, and, and really looking forward to working with him. Joe, do you view the quarterback position as a priority high in this draft still? You have the number 47 overall, or do you remain comfortable coming out of this draft without one of that? Yeah, I'm, com I'm comfortable where we are. I'm comfortable where we are. Do you believe you can find like a franchise quarterback at that point in the draft? Listen, I'm ecstatic about Malik. I mean, it, whatever, I don't know what's going on up there right now. I know a couple quarterbacks just went. So, again, we're going to look at all positions across the board. It's, you know, I, I've said last week that we have multiple, you know, needs across the, the board on the team, and we'll continue to, you know, try to fill those throughout the draft. And, again, we there can still be movement. We can, we can get more picks. We can trade up. Um, you know, we've done that in the past. So, again, we just got to – electric wide receiver that's uh, 20 years old. He actually won't be 21 until end of July. I had my guys look it up. I think he's the fourth youngest player in the that we had on our entire board amongst you know 450 players that we you know again in certain ranges. But um, a young player that we're you know is electric and, and we're really fired up at, about about acquiring. Is there a point where you he kind of like stood out and popped to you throughout the process? Maybe it wasn't even this year. Yeah, LSU. The amount of players that they had you know our staff was able to you know see him play live several times seen him two years in a row I happened to be at their their first game of the year versus Florida State two years in a row so he's he's been our, on our radar as a as a really good player um, and again just we were at the pro day you know we had him in on a 30 visit you know went to dinner with him a couple different times and getting around the kid he you know he's a great kid he's he's super competitive he's he's driven and um you know, I'm, I'm excited about adding him. He's a good player. Right, right of you guys, you know, what, what does this do for Daniel? He's never really had a, a top receiver like this. Well, look, we got to get we got to get him in. He's, you know, obviously he was ultra productive at LSU. Um, made a ton of plays, I would say, deep, intermediate, short. Uh, it'd be good to get him in here and, and get him acclimated to what we do. And, um, you know, I know he's excited about it. We're excited to have him.
the Joe, guts. There was the honestly. Top, was he the top receiver on your board? He, he was in the mix of multiple guys. So we, we had a lot of guys that we liked that would fit in the, the way we had them stacked. Um, at the time when we took him, he was the he was the top receiver on our board. There was obviously an arrest at some point with him mm -hmm. with the gun. Uh, the charges eventually dropped, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming that wasn't a problem with you. And what, you know, how did you guys go about looking into that? Yeah, we've we've got a extensive process in terms of background on 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 these guys, and from you know you can watch it. You can bring up the film and watch what happened. And uh, again, Jerry Mead does a phenomenal job for us. And we have some other resources that we reach out to and use, whether it's boots on the ground at the campus, in the cities, whatever it may be. So we're very comfortable with, with players that we turn the card in on. Brian, at the um, combine, um, Malik said that um, he talked about the meeting and he just talked about how much fun it was. And you guys were joking around and doing this. I mean, <clears throat> take me in the room there. I mean, was it fun? Was he, you know? Yeah, I, I, I enjoy those meetings, but he I, I love his personality. Um, he's a very, very competitive young man. So it was good to sit down and kind of introduce ourselves and him to get him to, him to introduce himself to us. You know, he came here. He's, he's a competitive guy, um, and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with him. Joe, you know, how, if at all, did you weigh McCarthy there versus Malik? Yeah, Malik was our guy. We, he's a guy we targeted. Again, we, we took him. You know the players that were on the board, and we took uh, Malik Neighbors. How many times? How many times did you see him play um, in person last year? Last year, one time. I saw LSU play one time. Joe, can At what point? About, which game can was you that? You speak about Malik's toughness. I Florida State. The, the shoulder injury early in the season last year, but I don't believe he missed any games. Can you just talk about that? Yeah, that's legit. You know, talking to the trainers and the medical staff, this guy doesn't miss. Like whatever it is, it's. He's going to play through it. He's tough. He doesn't miss games. Doesn't miss practice. If if he can play, he's going to play. So again, that that's the why the way this kid's wired. You, you'll see it. You know, when you guys get around and see the way he practices. You know, the way he plays on on game day. And you know, just again, when you, you see his highlights and you see some of the stuff that he can do, whether it's with the ball in his hand or without the ball in his hand, it's just you know, when guys are wired like that at, at his age, you know, that's that's ingrained in him by then, and that's who he is. So we're looking forward to bringing some of that toughness, explosiveness to the roster. What did you see? Him? Yeah, I mean, he, he's been productive. He's had back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons, so he's he scored more touchdowns this year than he did the year before. But I also think, uh, you know, Jaden really elevated his game this year and they had a, they had a good supporting cast. So, um, you know, I, you saw a lot of the traits last year as well. And, again, he's a young kid. So, you know, when you're evaluating him last year, you're eva evaluating a 19-year-old kid this year, a 20-year-old kid. So um, when you see what some of these receivers are getting right now, you know, APY, and you know you get a guy at his age where we got him in the draft and you know you're going to have him cost controlled for five years or you're fired up about that